In the last video, we were talking about horizontal translations, and we were saying that y equaled f of x minus a, in other words, if it's in the brackets, uh, then it does a horizontal shift of a units, either left or right. See, earlier we were looking at things like uh, vertical translations, and this is if it's if you tack on a plus b or a minus b outside of the function, then it goes up or down. And it makes sense that if it's plus b, it goes up by b. If it's minus b, it goes down by b. However, with horizontal translations, uh, and in fact, anything that's within the bracket, so to speak, uh, it does opposite of what you expect. So here, these go left or right. But this is a key thing here. So I'll give you an example here. Uh, let's say we do um, y equals f of x minus 1. We would expect like before, oh, minus 1 means, let's see, uh, left by 1. But actually, that means right by 1 unit. So if I had y equals, I don't know, f of x plus, I don't know, 8, you'd think, oh, that means it goes right by 8. Nope, left by 8 units. So this is sort of how it works. Okay, so it's really weird. It's opposite of what you expect. Gigantic arrows, alarm bells ringing, everything should be going off whenever you see something within a bracket. So I'll show you an example. So here I want to sketch the graph of y equals x minus 1 squared. Do you notice this is within the bracket here, so to speak? In other words, it's, it's the parent function is still something squared, except it's within the bracket, so it's x minus 1. So this tells us it's a left or right translation. And again, we would think, oh, if it's left or right, minus 1 means left. Nope, that means it's right by 1. All right, so I'll do that. So right right by one unit. That's what this is going to mean. And over here, this one, uh, actually, let's just uh, deal with this one. So what's the parent function here? Well, it's something squared. So that's an x squared. I know what that parent function looks like. So in the past here, we were looking at these parent functions. Right? We would start off with a parent function, and we moved it up or down because they were outside of the bracket, so to speak. Well, here now, I'm going to be doing them at this time uh, with a parent function of, let's say here, in this case, well, I want x squared. So I'm going to draw that in uh, black dotted lines. This is what x squared looks like. I should be careful, I think, and draw x and y. It's always important to draw those. By the way, for this one right here, I may as well do it now. This is going to go like this, and it's going to have an x and a y, just so I don't forget. Now what we do then is this is the parent function x squared, but we go right by one unit. So that means I pick up this whole graph and I move it over to the right by one. So if this is one unit, then I would draw this graph. It looks just like this, except it's just right here. Uh, those who use computers, which is, well, hopefully just about everybody, uh, you should understand about this. This is like if you cut and paste it, you know, you just copied it here and you just pasted it over here. Right? It would be the same exact thing. That's why we call these translations, because they've just been shifted over or up or down or left or right. So let's look at this graph. Because by the way, we're done. This is what the graph here looks like. What's the graph of square root of x plus 1? Well, you have to first of all look at this and say, ooh, this is something within the square root. That's like within the bracket of f of x, so to speak. Now this, I find this notation sometimes a bit confusing. I like to just use real examples. I think it makes more sense. So in this case, then, what does this mean? Well, this means, you'd think plus 1 means to go right by 1, so uh-uh, it's left by 1 unit. So that means, then, uh, well, I need to think about my parent function, square root of x. We have to remember what that looks like. Square root of x normally does this. It's like a dotted line going like this. But if it's been moved to the left by one unit, then, well, that means I take the whole graph here. It's like I move it over by one, and then I have it do the same thing. So it'll be something like that. So this is taking this original parent function graph and taking everything and shoving it over to the left. So this is what this graph right here is going to look like. It's going to look like this. So hopefully you see that that's how we can do these guys here. Well, that sounds obscene. That's how we can solve these things. 
Uh, one little point of note, though, uh, notation. Sometimes people write a translation of, and they'll write it like this in this notation here. So I just want to help you out. This, what it means is um, left or right by x units and up or down by y units. So in, for example, if we want to sketch a graph of f of x and g of x, I just noticed my a and graph look like they're the same word. It's not. It's not sketch a graph. It's sketch a graph of f of x plus g of x. And I'm saying that f of x is x squared. Oh, that's easy. Right away before doing anything else, I can already graph f of x. f of x looks like well, x squared, I know that one. That's a parent function I know very well. It's just this nice, happy, regular parabola. That's f of x. But now what I want to do is also draw g of x, which is a translation of f of x by this. So what this means here, just like I was saying before with this notation. Now, this notation here is a little bit strange because this one is not opposite to what you think. In other words, this one right here, this means um, left or right by x. So in this case, a plus 1 means uh, right by 1. And it means we do down by 2. That's because this is negative 2. So up or down by y, left or right by x. In this case, if it's left, it's a minus, right is a plus, up is a positive, down is a minus. So this is normally what you would sort of imagine, what your logic would tell you. So in this case, it's right by one, down by two. So that means I take this original graph here, right, because this tells me that g of x, whoops, g of x is a translation of f of x by this. So that means I go right by one, and I go down by two. That's what the plus 1 and the minus 2 tell me. So right by 1, down by 2, that means I take this original graph here. Maybe I better draw it in different colors. I'll draw it green. So I take this and I move it right by 1. So I'll make sure I have that. Uh, I guess I'll draw that in blue just to keep things similar. So this is plus 1. And this right here, I'm going to need to go down by 2. So just so I have everything here so I can see it. So I'm going to need to take this point right here, bring it to the right by 1, and then down by 2. So this is my vertex of my quadratic here. This is my minimum. So basically I just draw myself some sort of graph doing this. This is the key thing here. This is g of x. See, so g of x looks just like f of x, except you took this point and just shoved it to the right, and then yanked it down by 2. That's what we did here. Okay, so we could have also written that the same thing, right? I mean, we could also say, well, what's what's the equation for g of x? Well, I can actually use what we've just learned. So here we can actually do things sort of properly. If I really wanted to write g of x, what I could do is say, fine, g of x represents, let's see, I take f of x, which is a something squared, right? So I'll just leave brackets here. I'll do something squared. Uh, well, I've got an x going on, but the question is what happens here? But I know for sure that I, I went down by 2, so that means I know for sure I have a minus 2 at the end. But the question is, do I go left or right? And in this sort of proper notation, then you do what we talked about here, where I said you do opposite to what you'd think. So in this case, if I want it to go to the right by 1, I would think it's a plus 1. That means it has to be a minus 1. So this graph right here is going to be the same as this graph right here. If you don't believe me, I can just get out my trusty calculator friend here. And what I can do is, of course, graph them. So just to prove to you that I'm not totally crazy, I will graph this equation here, x minus 1, x minus 1. Close the bracket. I will square that. And then I will say minus 2. And hopefully it works. So this should look like what I had before. See what I drew here it was right by 1, down by 2. See, the vertex is right by 1, down by 2. That's where the vertex is. So there are w different ways of writing it. This notation right here is really weird. I don't think it comes up all that often, but the other notation is much more common. So this way right here, that's the one to always use and go opposite to what you expect, just like the examples here that I showed you.